Welcome to Everyday Linux User. Today I am going to show you how to host your own VPN using a Raspberry Pi. Let's discuss what a VPN actually gives you in terms of benefits. Number one, it provides extra security by encrypting your data and therefore it means when you are using public Wi-Fi you are less susceptible to eavesdropping and man in the middle attacks that hackers use to intercept your data. And number two, they also improve your privacy by hiding your true IP address and replacing it with the IP address of the VPN server. Now whilst a Pi VPN will do this, the benefit of using something like NordVPN is that you can connect to servers in multiple locations and so you can appear to be in an entirely different country altogether. So if you're in certain locations such as the UK, then I bet you can already see why this might be a good thing. The Pi VPN setup used in this guide will provide the benefits of extra security and it can spoof and hide your IP address, but it can't help you get around local restrictions by pretending to be in a different location altogether. And that is where NordVPN comes in. It's available in locations all around the world. NordVPN provides a cost-effective VPN solution and enables you to protect 10 devices with no fiddling around with router settings. I have provided a link in the description to NordVPN with up to 73% off plus three extra months and a 30 day money back guarantee. Now let's get back to the video. To follow along with this guide, you will obviously need a Raspberry Pi. I am showing you the Raspberry Pi Hut for reference, but you can buy in many other stores. I will be using an old Raspberry Pi 3 that I had lying around, but if you were going to buy one, I would recommend a Raspberry Pi 5 with 8GB of RAM, as that is the sweet spot between price and functionality, and you can use it for more than just hosting a VPN. Now the price of a Raspberry Pi 5 varies, but you can see a Raspberry Pi 5 with the 8GB is around £78. But if you want a power supply, a basic case, an SD card etc, then you can go for one of the kits. I've put a couple of links to Amazon in the description to help you out with this. To get started, you will need to insert your SD card in an SD card reader. If your computer already has one, then simply insert the SD card into the reader. But if not, you can buy them for less than £10 on Amazon. And again, I have linked an example in the description. Once you have inserted the SD card into an SD card reader and have it connected to your computer, go over to www.raspberrypi.com forward slash software and click on the download for Windows. This is assuming you are using Windows, I will create a separate guide for Linux users shortly. When the software is downloaded, open a file explorer and go to your downloads folder and double click on the downloaded file. Choose your language from the drop down and click OK. Click next on the welcome screen and accept the agreement and then click next. Click next and then check the create a desktop shortcut checkbox and click next again. Finally click finish making sure to leave the launch Raspberry Pi imager checkbox checked. When Raspberry Pi imager opens click on choose device. I am going to choose the Raspberry Pi 3, but you will need to choose the device you are using. Now click choose OS and because we are just installing the VPN, I am going to go for the Raspberry Pi OS Lite image. This doesn't come with a desktop environment, but you won't need to log into it for very long. Finally click choose storage and choose your SD card and click next. To make it so that we don't have to hook the Pi to a screen, we will click Edit Settings. Click Set a Hostname and give your Pi a memorable name. I have gone for Pi VPN. Click Set a Username and enter a username or password that you want to use to be able to log into the Pi. Click Configure Wireless LAN and enter the Wi-Fi network name and the password that you need to connect to that Wi-Fi network. Click on Services and choose Enable SSH. Now click Save. Click Yes to apply the custom settings. Note that all the data on the SD card will be wiped. If you are sure, click Yes. The Raspberry Pi OS will be installed to the SD card. This can take a short while, but when it is finished, it will display this message. Remove the SD card from your computer and insert it into the slot on the Raspberry Pi 
and plug your Raspberry Pi in. You do not need to hook up a keyboard, mouse or monitor as you will connect straight from Windows to your Raspberry Pi. Press the start button and type CMD. To make sure your Raspberry Pi has connected, type ping and the name you gave to the Pi. It should respond similarly to what you see on the screen. Now type SSH, space, your username, at, and then your Raspberry Pi name, and then enter the password for the Pi user. Before we install the VPN software, you will need to change some router settings. Now this will differ depending on your router, but you will see here that essentially I go into my advanced settings, then I go into my network, and I find my Pi in the list of devices connected to the network. I click into the device and then I set that always use this IP address for this device. Essentially you want to set a static IP address for the device so that every time it boots up it has the same IP address. And this is an important step. You can let the Pi do it during installation but this is the safest option. Within the command prompt type sudo apt update. This refreshes the software repositories so they are up to date. Now type sudo apt upgrade. This makes sure every package installed is up to date. When asked, press Y to continue. The updates can take a few minutes, but when you're back at the prompt, you can continue. Type curl minus L HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash install dot pyvpn dot io and then the pipe symbol and then the word bash and then press return. This will install the pyvpn software. You will be shown an installer. Press return to continue. As you can see, it's now mentioning about the static IP address mentioned previously. If you have set the device as static using your router, press tab so that, that yes is highlighted and then press return. If you haven't changed your router settings, leave the no highlighted and press return. Press return on the next screen and choose the user you want to use to run Pi VPN. We only created one user, so make sure there is an asterisk in the box and press tab to highlight OK. You will be asked which VPN you wish to use. I recommend using WireGuard. To choose an option, press space to put an asterisk in the box. Press tab to highlight OK and then press return. PyVPN will now do some more installation and then it will ask you to choose a port number. Enter the number you wish to use and press tab to highlight OK and press return. You can leave it as the default if you so wish. Write the number down though because you will need it later on. When asked if the settings are correct, highlight yes using the tab and press return. You will now need to choose the DNS provider. For this guide I will use custom but I recommend using something like Google. To select an option use the arrow keys and press space to put an asterisk in the box. Press tab to highlight OK and press return. As I chose custom I have to enter the IP address and this is the main home address for the router and it's the same as you would use to enter the admin panel. Press tabs to select OK and press return. You'll be asked to confirm these settings are correct. Use tab to select yes and press return. After a short while you will see a message about unattended upgrades. Press return to say OK and then press tab on the next screen to select yes and press return. Pi VPN is now installed. Press OK on the installation complete screen. It will ask you to reboot. Press tab to highlight yes and press return. The system will start to reboot and you will be kicked out of your SSH session. Wait a couple of minutes for the Pi to reboot and then use the SSH command from earlier to log back in. We now need to add a config file that can be used by clients to connect to the VPN. You can create multiple configs if you wish so that each device has its own config. Type pyvpn space add. Press return to select the default options and then give the config a name. If you type ls, you will see there is a configs folder and if you type cd configs and then ls again, you will see there is a config file. We need to get that config file onto the computer or computers you wish to connect to the VPN. One way to do this is to use an FTP program. For this example we will use FileZilla but you can also use WinSCP or any FTP program of your choice. Head over to FileZilla-project.org. Click the download for Windows and then choose the free option. 
When the program is downloaded, open the file explorer and go to your downloads folder. Double click on the FileZilla installer. Note the first screen is an offer and if you accept it, it will install AVG browser. You can click decline if you so wish and click next and you will just get FileZilla. Click next for anyone to use FileZilla and click next again. And again on the downloads folder. Finally click install. When the installer has completed, click finish and FileZilla will launch. Enter the IP address of your Raspberry Pi or the name you gave to the Raspberry Pi. Then enter the Raspberry Pi username or password and importantly enter 22 into the port number and then click quick connect. Select yes when warned. Navigate into the configs folder in the right column and download the file to a memorable folder in the left column. I chose my downloads folder. You now need to download the WireGuard client. Head over to www.wireguard.com forward slash install and click on the download for Windows. Open a file explorer and go to your downloads folder. Double click on the downloaded file. Click on the import tunnel from file option and then find the config file you downloaded using FileZilla. Don't activate the connection yet though. Go back to your router's admin page again and this still differs for each router, but you can see I log in and go to my network and add in a port forward for the Pi VPN. I simply enter Pi VPN as the name and the port number for WireGuard. Remember that number I told you to write down previously? After you've done that, make sure UDP is set as the option and save the settings. Finally, you can now click to activate your VPN. To prove this works, I have deactivated the VPN and connected directly to my network. And you can see the IP address starts with 86.140. I then switch over to my phone's Wi-Fi hotspot and show the IP address again and you can say it is now different and starts 92.40. Finally, I activate the VPN while still connected to my phone's hotspot and you will see my IP again is starting 86.140, proving it is going through the VPN. So what if you want to connect to the VPN from a phone? Well, you can use a QR code. Install the WireGuard app onto your phone and open it and choose the option to connect using QR code. SSH onto the Raspberry Pi again and type pyvpn-qr. A QR code will appear and you can scan it with your phone. You can now activate the VPN using your phone. What if you want to change config settings? For instance, I want to use Google's DNS instead of the ISP DNS. Type cd forward slash etc forward slash pyvpn forward slash wireguard. Then type sudo space nano space setup varsconf You can now change the settings. For instance, I am typing 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4 to use Google's DNS. To save, press Ctrl and O and to exit, Ctrl and X. This doesn't instantly change the settings. You have to revoke the previous settings you added. Typing VPN-L gives a list of the configs and you can remove them by typing PyVPN-R and then the name of the config you want to remove. You can then use PyVPN-Add as before to create a new config and you can use the same methods for getting the config onto your computer and your phone and other devices as you did previously. But for now, that is the end of the guide. It is complicated, but hopefully you followed along and you have it working. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and I will see you next time on Everyday Linux User.